As always, this episode of the 1878 FM podcast is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. Make Green King your go-to destination for the season's final stretch. Why? For one, you can watch every televised Toffees game down with delicious food and refreshing beverages. And with 900 sports clubs dotted around the UK, chances are you're within walking distance of your local Green King. Let's be honest, watching football is way better with friends and family. So get the squad together for every televised Premier League fixture in an atmosphere worth sharing. That includes huge title showdowns, race for European qualification and the nail-biting relegation system. Pointers. Don't forget to download the Green King Sports app to enjoy your exclusive competitions and discounts whenever there is a game on. Right, on with the podcast. Hello, welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. It is episode 38 of Series 2, Season 2, Series 2, Season 2. Mm. I believe... I think it should be series, I think Season's American, isn't it? Mm. Okay, well, okay, Series 2. Mm. That really like took effect. Remember, like when twenty four came in, that's mm. when season started, season didn't started, it? Yeah. That's when we all started to refit. Which which one are you? I'm on season two, yeah, the I one where Jack like saves it. the world over yeah. twenty four hours. I mean, does it? Yeah. No, I know, but, but yeah. that's why you had season yeah. one on two, three, just so yeah. to clear that up to clear it. Fair when play. I was a kid, it was either a series or a serial, and a serial mm. like followed on, but a series mm. didn't. Mm. It's an interesting point, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Mm. Yeah, well done, Sam, for clearing that up for mm. us. That was, mm. that was brilliant. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Our VAR man, that, just it, to clear it up is any, any issues. Just done that. Um, yeah. Mm. Uh, if he's not walking around coffee shops in in Bristol and Southampton, he's he's clearing up what a series series or season is, or walking mm. through a car park at seven thirty, planning his day, clear doing some of his stuff. Seven thirty a.m. with the sun on his face. Okay. But fair play, he had stuff to do. He had stuff to do. Um, in a car park. In a car in park a car at half seven was in the morning. Was it a car boot sale, was he? No further questions, please. <laughs> no, no comments. No comments. <laughs> and I would, I, would ask you, I would ask you not to ask any further questions of my client as well. Okay. <laughs> there will okay. be no further statement from either of us at this moment in time. Are you the appropriate adult, Data? <laughs> hey, listen, I'm appropriate for everything now. That I've, I've, now that I'm in my 40s, right? Yeah. I think yeah. I'm a proper grown-up and I'm mm, yeah. appropriate for answering any serious questions. Question is, though, do you buy your own clothes? I do, I do. You know, I started buying my own clothes probably when I was about 28, to be mm, honest with you, mm, you know, mm. and I've done it ever since. So, you know, it's 12 years or so. Well done, 12, 12 years, years. yeah. Well been done. a lot of talk in our studio of people buying their own clothes. We can come back to that. In fact, there was a piece of clothing yesterday that, that Ned had on that maybe he shouldn't have bought for himself, but we'll leave that. We'll leave it there. We'll just leave it there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's not, let's not, just in case someone else has listened. Yeah, who was fuming. Um... Let's go back to Friday night, Everton at Luton. Uh, a 1-1 draw. Mm-hmm. Everton was safe, virtue mm-hmm. of some tremendous three victories in a week. Um, but Luton, away, it was a bigger game for them, Dave, than it was for Everton. But yep. good to see, I guess good to see Everton still resilient enough and arsed enough to not lose the game and keep a good little run going at the moment. I think so as well, yeah. I mean, you know, you could have, or there could be some who may have thought that they could have rolled over in that Mm. game, as you say, with the fact that they just had sort of three massive wins on the bounce and they'd made themselves safe, but they didn't. And they they did. They competed all the way through. Um, And yeah, it was good to see. I mean, even towards the end, you know, they were still competing. So, I mean, from my point of view as well, and and this, this may sound very, very pessimistic, but I'm keen that we get all the points on the board that we possibly can, because if there was to be any kind of retrospective summer thing with any further points deduction, then we need that buffer, don't we? Um... You not think? No, because no. nothing will happen this season anyway. Now I think I think okay. it'll be for next season, won't it? Yay! If, if, if there's any, <laughs> no, no, if there's anything. But I was going to ask you, Dave. How rough the next season? We, Nottingham Forest had the results of their appeal the other mm. day, mm. Uh, which was basically get out and stop no. wasting our time. Mm. You, yeah. You've got what you've got. Move on. And I imagine yeah. that Everton's appeal will end very similar. It'll mm. just be you've got what you've got and get on because the rules are slightly changing and, and everything else. But I was told the reason why Everton, because there's there's a little bit of chat about Everton should just bin the appeal now and oh, go, yeah. ah, it doesn't matter. But I was mm. told that they kind of have to do it because it's going to, it, well, it may well help 
them further down the line. The legal process. The legal process okay. by actually doing it. So it'll be, mm-hmm. that's why they've got to carry it through. But Sam, I mean, people, I've seen mixed reviews about the game. I thought you were talking about Sam Zach. No, not Sam Zach. <laughs> uh, mixed... no, I mean, I've heard nothing but positive reviews about Absolutely. Sam Zach. Absolutely. Out. Can you send me the link, please? Thank you. <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm cu- currently compiling a dossier of all the good <laughs> results. And then, then I'm going to send them yeah. through to you. A, a screenshot of Twitter uh, comments. <laughs> um, we, we, it didn't really matter, did it? But I understand people wanted, you win those three games and people think, no, we'll, we'll win the next one and we'll win the next one. And it doesn't always play out like that. But like Dave said, even though I suppose Everton weren't in top form, they were still throwing themselves in the way of shots in injury time, making sure that they didn't lose the game. And I guess having a, a little bit of a mini run at the moment is is good for everything, isn't it? It's good for morale. It's building something, I think, for the, probably for the for the manager and showing the togetherness for the fans, maybe. Yeah, I think for me the best part of the whole experience of that Luton game was. Waking up on the day of the game, you know, you know, sometimes you wake up and you feel anxious and you don't know why. Mm. Well, That's normally on, on a Friday. Monday forever. Yeah. Normally mm. on a Monday, <laughs> but before this podcast, before mm. we do this. But, but, you know, sometimes you can't pinpoint why you feel a certain way. And I woke up on Friday and I had this weird sort of excitement in my stomach. And I, I didn't know where it was, where it was coming <laughs> from. And it was the Everton game because there was nothing riding on it for the yeah. first time in yeah. what feels yeah. like three plus years. Mm. So I had a gig in, where was I, Matlock, I was in, in Darby Oh, lovely, Shed. yeah, so good place. I got mm-hmm. there early, and I found a pub, and I watched the first half, and I still mm-hmm. haven't seen the second half, because I just, I, it doesn't matter, yeah. I listened to the end of the game, I was I was on stage for some of the second half, but the first half, I was watching it, I was thinking, this is great, we're not pe- playing <laughs> particularly well, but it doesn't matter, and mm-hmm. then before we got the penalty, there was that penalty shout when, I can't even remember who got, who, who McNeil, 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 McNeil was yeah. And I was like, oh, that could be a penalty. Maybe it isn't. And he didn't give it. I was like, well, maybe it wasn't. Mm. Instead of going absolutely yeah. apoplectic, the barman said, that was probably a pen. And I went, it mm. might have been. But... And I yeah. said to the barman, I said, if the, if we needed the points in this game, you would have ejected me from this bar now by the way I would be behaving if that wasn't given. Yeah. So we went 1-0 up. Uh, I loved Ashley Young's hype man routine, bouncing the ball before the pen. Yeah, it was like brilliant. Flavor Flay. Yeah. And brought on Chuck D, yeah. I, a.k.a. Dom to just lev- lever it through the middle. So that, that was mm. nice. But then Luton scored. And they then... took that well, though, didn't they? That, yeah, that, it was a good goal. Equalizer. Good goal. Mm, good goal. Mm. They've poor defender, it let's be honest. It was, but it was good centre forward play. It was good centre forward play. I mean, Ped, it's. Can I just start? Oh, I... Go on. It, um, wasn't Matt Lock the OAP who solved crimes? I don't know. I just wanted to, I just needed to say that. Okay. Hang on, let me Google it. I just want Dave will Dave will yeah, 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 Sex Pistols, wasn't he, Glenn Matlock? And yeah, then Glenn I need Matlock. to know whether the town or the man come first. Hang on. Well, well the, town, the town because I've yeah, played yeah, it. Matlock, Matlock town. town. Yeah. Scenario. I'm a machine in the Uh Matlock Detective. Uh in in the role of former deputy sheriff Conrad McMasters as Matlock's eager private investigator. There you go, that's them. So Matlock starring Andy Griffith. There you go, Andy Griffith. There you go, yeah. There you go. Big Andy. I thought it was a segue that needed to be brought into the podcast. No issue. No issue. Yeah. We'll look for other detective um, links as well. We when, when, he, when, when, Sam, we start talking when Stan plays at Ironside, then we'll get into Then we'll be there. <laughs> we'll, then we'll or be on Columbo. To yeah. I thought Columbo's the place, isn't it? There you go. You might be doing you know, international gigs in Sri Lanka, and then we could have another detective link. Yes. You know the remake in Bergerac? Are they? Are they? Are they? Rebooting it. Well, who's going to play? also a place as well, by the way, Bergerac. Yeah, exactly. Serrano yeah. de Bergerac or John Nettles Bergerac? John Nettles. John Nettles one. Mm. So it's only a matter of time before Love Joy mm. comes back, and I think that's mm. the news we've all been waiting for. No, not without it? Ian McShane. Yeah, but but he well, I'm, I'm guessing Bergerac's not coming back with John Nettles. Yeah, but surely. who cares? That was John Nettles. He's not the same, is he? It's the same. Was it Ian McShane? Was it Ian McShane? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I doubted yeah. myself for a second, and Ian obviously McShane. went off to be a big star in America. Mm. He did. Wasn't thinking Love Joy. And and pre- thingy, Rocky and Lotio, Neil Rock- Morrissey. Rocky! Balboa! <laughs> Not Rocky. Silver Rocky Star. Balboa! Hey, well, how much is, <laughs> how much is this ancient verse? <laughs> I mean, he wasn't John Bishop playing bleeding Rocky Balboa. <laughs> okay, now if you just slow that down one more second. Let's bring it from the Ming Dynasty. <laughs> the Ming. 
dynasty. Oh, you know when mush, like, I'm a getting. Get <laughs> you know when like she's, do you know when she's breathing? You hear her breathing with that great puke. Um, Pat, back to football. He put the HS2 right. through me garden. Well, they didn't because he. It, it was that slow. It was nearly slower than John speaking. So they binned it. Go um, go on. <laughs> it, there, there is, there is a weird feeling, isn't that? For the first time in three years, yeah. I said this to. I said this to. It's not three years. It's five years. I, I worked it out last week. No, but I said to 2019. Since literally, since literally, we as fans have been able to go into the the ground and like enjoy the last game with the season. Yeah, that, I mean, that's literally a lie. It's not because we're COVID. You tit. <laughs> You can't call me a tip. I <laughs> I've done all the research while you weren't here. Someone had to do it. No, but and I did it. Game, well, about time. Please I help. did it. About time. We had COVID and then we had... Yeah, but, uh, all right. So you're right. Marco Silva's last full I, season. I get you right yeah, on yeah. a... Technicality. Yeah, you're right on a technicality. <laughs> it was just some about Everton yeah, games because yeah. we all witnessed them. Yeah, yeah. What are you having for your well, tea? Hang set? on. <laughs> hang on a sec. No, you're wrong. Okay, I'm you're wrong. wrong. He's wrong. Go on. Uh, boys, he's wrong. Go on. Right. I've done all of these while you've been away. I'm a wrong. You're wrong. I'm a wrong. Because. I went to Wolves at all. That doesn't count. With Richard. Is this still on? Is this is this still on? Is this still on? There's only 6,000 years there. We've been in there. No, it doesn't the count. The point I was making was it's the first time since the la- you know, mm. Carlo Ancelotti's game time. where it didn't matter yeah. at Man City. It just didn't matter. Yeah. Yet you're right being in a full mm. stadium yeah. on a technicality. Then it's silver, but mm. for the first time in three, it doesn't matter, does it? The last day of the yeah. season doesn't matter. Coming into the studio mm. on Tuesday, there was just a calmness of like, there's no there's no impending doom. There's no... I, I mean, there is, because we might even have a football club. But playing side-wise... Mm. It mm. is a nice feeling, isn't it, to just have that yeah. that taken away. Yeah, I get, telling me how nervous you were. I get a notification on my phone twenty four hours before we play, and normally yeah. that's the that's the like. I thought you meant for your heart rate. Yeah. About that's Everton normally games. the sign of like the beginning of like you know anxiety. But you mm. know, it came on on Thursday, and I was just like, sad, mm. sad. Keep keep going. Mm. Happy days. Keep breathing. Keep living life. Keep. I mean, that that is an keep essential. Like I find. Yeah, keep yeah. Breathing. Like when I'm signs in a kitchen. Just, you know, keep breathing. Um, love life, keep breathing. Mm. No, it's good, isn't it? It's fun. <laughs> but, it, but we just, yeah, I mean, and it, but it is the end of the season, isn't it? The end of the day, it's great. It's great that we've been able to get through, you know, and enjoy it. And we can enjoy Saturday the same, mm-hmm. our last home game. And the, I think it's the first time since 2009 we've played our the last home game on a Saturday at 3 o'clock. So that will that will be that's that tells you everything you need to know about football. You but have been you have been in you know the books, haven't you? Since you have to you have to when you're when you're running this ship on your well, own. How do we get on? Because um, we obviously had an FA Cup final coming. We won, didn't we? I think. I think we won two 0 Didn't didn't do that much recently. No, I, I've t- I've things fall out my ears. Because mm. um, some but, people thought it was a one one versus Southampton, but that was a half five kick off on a Saturday. Those people were put put right. One one at home, yeah. Oh, Tom Davis. Tom Davis last minute is about four was people went thirty. In. Yeah, and there was no one in the ground when they done the yeah. the lap of the lap appreciation. of appreciation. Mm-hmm. There mm-hmm. certainly wasn't a lap of honour. Uh, going into, I mean, Dave, going into this last game at Goodison at the weekend, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's. A, I think despite us saying, "Oh, it's great," it doesn't matter now. We're not. I think it's important that Everton finish with a win now, just to because if Everton were to win at the weekend. That'd be five home wins on the run. And I think, you know, given that it took us till April to register our fourth home win of the season, mm. if they could finish with, with a home victory, it'd send everyone off, wouldn't it? it away from Goodison. Oh, we still got to go to Arsenal and all of that. But it would send everyone away from Goodison Park feeling feeling positive, really. And, and you know, can we start making Goodison difficult for teams again? Well, five wins on the run, if they could achieve it, would suggest that, wouldn't it? No, absolutely. It's just good for the mentality of everybody involved in, in the football club, always. Mm. And, and and also, I mean, the other way of looking at it is that, you know, we're talking about professional footballers here. They should be going out to win every game. Mm. You know, mm. regardless of, you know, whether there's anything on it or not. You mm. know, at the end of the day, this is their job to give their all every time, you know, without stating the obvious. And and so, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I do. I want them to to go and, and win well on, on Saturday for the last home game. And, you know, on the basis that, you know, we, we don't fancy ourselves getting anything against Arsenal in the last, the last game of the season. But, mm. 
Yeah, I mean, I just think that you know, you can tell by the mood here and everything is just, you know, looking at that table now and actually not seeing all those kind of red L's all the way next to mm, all yeah. the results is so nice to see that, you know, to see the wins and to see the draw and whatever like that and ultimately see us unbeaten for a while mm-hmm. um, is a good feeling. And as you say, if we can go into the summer with that with that mindset, it's just a healthier place all around rather than, you know, sort of dragging ourselves into the summer in this doom and gloom. We've got enough... We've got enough things to, you know, potentially concern ourselves with over the summer anyway, mm. uh, without worrying about matters on the pitch. Definitely. I mean, Sam, if Everton were to win at the weekend, that would be 40 points, the magical 40 points for the season. And obviously that's with two points deductions as well. So, And we, we have said on the podcast many times this season, the home form will get Everton safe. That was what we were talking about. It, it being that poor all season that... We had to pick our home form up, and if we were able to do that, it would see us over the line, and ultimately, that's what we've done. And, and if we were to get 40 points, then I think, you know, that is a, that's a decent return, given we did go four months without winning a game of football. Oh, yeah, it's an amazing return, really. Mm-hmm. And I think it's hard to get a proper, clear view of what this season's been because yeah. of all the all the disruptions off the pitch mm. and also the distribution of victories have all come in clusters that have been yeah. spread out across the season. So you can't, you, you know, 15 games without a win, it's 14 or 15 games, wasn't it? Pedal now, he, he's been checking the books. It's but, 14. Um, yeah. It's 14. I mean, that's <laughs> graceful. But yeah. if those victories, and the, we had those four just after the first points deduction, which mm. would, all came in one go, if we could, if they would have been spread out across the season, perhaps as fans we wouldn't have hit the depths that we've we've mm, hit because true, the, yeah. on, on pitch um, stuff's not been so you know so great across the mm. season. But in the way that when it became a cliche at Everton, didn't it? A bad performance on the pitch, like clockwork, a picture of the new stadium would appear on social media, <laughs> and now it feels like it's flipped. A good performance on the pitch. And then, like clockwork, some terrible news about the ownership. So the, you know, the, <laughs> the, the purchase seven seven seven. You know what have they done now? The, the, yeah. the, it's ah, so you've got to kind of balance that up. Mm. But it's really, it's still. I'm I'm just can't wait to put this season to bed. Yeah. I really can't because it's been absolutely yeah. unenjoyable oh. for I'd say ninety percent of it. No, but you're right though, aren't you? Because we've won, we've won a third of our games. So mm. if we'd won every third game, say, mm. you yeah. would feel so much better about the season. You know what I mean? You'd, yeah. you'd, you, you wouldn't be worrying as much. It'd be, you know, I think you'd, there'd be less criticism of the manager. No, of course there would, because well. would, we wouldn't have had that big, big um, crisis. Cr- yeah, mm-hmm. it felt like a crisis. And you mixed mm-hmm. in the, 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 the points deductions in that spell, obviously. Mm-hmm. And it, it's all come together. And I do, f- I do feel sorry for the manager in that, in that respect because you can never get a true, as Sam said, you can never get a true reflection of what this season was going to be. Yeah. And I think that's all we hope for next season, isn't it? Is that part of these problems, hopefully the ownership situation gets played out in the summer to a, to a, into a positive place, hopefully. And when we're, we're not, you know, there are going to be issues next season. We know this sort of one PSR thing sort of hanging over our head already. The thing that's been deferred. But really, that that could be just a technicality, which is means we get n- nothing, and then and then obviously we have to look at whether we are going to get hit with an actual PSR thing next season. Um, but you'd like to think it might just be a, a steady season with that. I think even at the beginning of the season, that was hanging over us, wasn't it? Everyone knew this charge was coming, and it was mm-hmm. hanging and hanging, and it came mm-hmm. didn't come till November, so that was always there in the back of people's minds. You know. Oh, you are doing all right, but you wait till you get hit. And it's like, that was always there. Yeah, It'd yeah. be lovely to go on a season without that hanging over our heads. Yes, there will be problems. Yes, we don't know how many plays we're going to have for next season or the quality of those plays. But it'd lovely, be lovely just to have be without those problems. And if you are winning then, you know, one in three and, and we're not having long gaps, then I think we'll all feel better. And obviously with it being the last season of Goodison as well, next season, there will be an expectation that we have to win those home games and those home games will all feel special because they are all the last time. I and mean, we've got one on Saturday, funny enough, haven't we? This mm-hmm. will be the last ever time Sheffield United come to Goodison, yeah. obviously because mm-hmm. they've been relegated. And obviously next season, we'll just be ticking them off every mm-hmm. game yeah. and it'll feel, it'll feel special and hopefully... And it's it's if you've got like this feeling now where you're not worried as such... 
You know, I call it the Crystal Palace feeling. Mm. You know, um, they do have a spell where they're worried. Them. Yeah. And then someone just goes, lads, yeah, what are we doing? 13 3 man, but yeah. they go, okay, we'll win yeah. 500. On. And, and, it, it is, and it's it'd just be nice to just feel like that instead of having that horrible sinking feeling in mm. your gut all the time about Everton. Well, I mean, there is, you know, away from the pitch, it looks as though things are coming to a conclusion with, I mean, Sam just mentioned it, triple sevens mm. bid for Everton there. It seems like that's going to fall away now, Ped. I mean, yeah. it's been ongoing and ongoing and ongoing and, mm. and deadlines have been extended. Yeah. It does seem as if it's coming to an end. Mm. And us as fans, we we need, we, we said that we this week and obviously we'll ask the lads now as well, but we need a finality of this, don't we? One way or the yeah. other, it, it does seem like it's going to be a no, but yeah. it needs, we need it, don't we? Because the club yeah. literally is just floating, isn't it? And that life yeah. jacket is, yeah. it's got a hole in it. Well, I was thinking it was floating like something else, but yeah. um, mm-hmm. no, it, it, it needs a line thrown under the sand, in the sand, no matter what, whichever way it needs, a, it needs that line. Now, someone has got to be an adult now mm. um, and go, this is done. That's, yeah. And it feels like the adults now have come again from the fan base, <laughs> the, the uh, Shareholders Association and, and the, and the fan advisory board have mm. obviously put strong statements out, and that's obviously got the media to to start poking at it. And yeah. Michelle's going to have to come out of whichever yacht he's sitting in. And mm. well, he's apparently, allegedly, he's in London. Well, on so a I, yacht. I don't know. On I, a yacht. I don't. Well, maybe he's in Chelsea Harbour. He could well send be. Dave down on his bike to find him. Mm. Could do, couldn't I? Mm. But yeah, I mean, Dave, what 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 are your thoughts on this? Um, I, like you, I think that this has been going on for so long. Um, it didn't ever smell good to me in the first place, mm. just the whole setup. And mm. I mean, listen, my understanding of corporate takeovers and financing football clubs is limited at best, right? But don't surprise um, me that, Dave. Yeah, no, I mean, I won't, I won't honestly hold my hands up for being any kind of financial expert. However, what I do understand doesn't sound particularly good. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that, these investigations into their appropriateness as potential owners has been going on that long that you think, well, if there's that many questions being asked, again, it doesn't stack up well to me. Um, so I would like to see that end swiftly um, and mm. move on to you know another potential bidder who will stack up better. I mean, all I've read thus far is, you know, they're talking about Tim Cale, aren't they? Sort of trying to secure some Qatari investment. <laughs> exactly how that's happening, I don't know. But if he pulls that off, as somebody wrote the other day, let's build a statue of him, mm. you know, mm-hmm. um, if he can make that happen. So um, I'm sort of pinning my hopes on something which is more solid mm. and uh, reliable and uh, less concerning all yeah. around but we will see i mean sam just on that like dave's saying are we in a position now where we're only going to attract that kind of person at the moment you know what i mean if it was if it was to be like you know i know i i understand fully before anyone jumps on this that we aren't manchester united's level of club or chelsea's level of club in terms of recent histories and United the biggest club in the world anyway regardless mm. so that that doesn't matter and their recent history hasn't been great anyway but Chelsea have certainly won a lot of trophies in the Abramovich era which has made them a, a big club and again just being in America the last couple of weeks you see more Chelsea shirts and Manchester City shirts than any and I've been going to Florida since the mid 90s and it all used to be Liverpool United and there was loads mm. of Everton shirts mm. and I did see a couple of mm. Everton shirts but it was heavily Chelsea and Manchester City all Americans um, <clears throat> but you know United in the summer that Sheikh Yassim and mm. it seemed like there was half a dozen billionaires and Chelsea had four or five didn't they it, that's never those kind of people have never seen to have been at the table Never knowing, you know, a bit like, what was it, George Henry Lee, was it? Or never knowingly unsold. Oh, yeah, yeah. Never knowingly at the table trying to buy <laughs> Everton, were they, any of these? Yeah. And it does seem as though what we're likely to get is these venture capitalists who, okay, they want to make money, absolutely. Everyone does, don't they, if you buy a football club. But if you pick them apart, you do start to yeah. worry about what they want out of your club. But do you think we're only likely to attract that type of person anyway given our recent history and also the debt as well 
Well, just as Dave said, I'm no expert on on all of these takeover mm. issues, but I know that like for years, I mean, we're we're all of the belief that Everton are the greatest club in the world because that's why we're Everton fans. But mm. obviously, if we take a step out of out of our biased sort of outlook, mm. like I always thought years ago, the dream was to have like a local businessman done good, like a Jack Walker mm. character, yeah, 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 yeah. the club yeah, yeah. wanted to pump money into it. We sort of got, I mean, Peter Johnson was a copite, wasn't he? But he was a mm. local businessman. He sold mm. hampers. I mean, it's weird when even, you know, what, 30 years ago to think some guy who sold Christmas hampers could afford to buy a football club. Because fast forward <laughs> to 2024, the kind of two camps seem to be either nations mm. buying clubs, like literal nations buying clubs, or you've got, you know, like the Glazers, mm. um, you know, like the, the 777 seem to be, where they're just trying to buy a club as part of a, a collateral package that they've got yeah. that they can leverage against all the mm. debt. Now, I don't know how all this works. I read the book years ago called Where Did All the Money Go? And it was about the financial crash of 2008. And as I read the book, I was like, I understand it all now because it was written really well. But of course, within about 10 minutes, forgot everything. <laughs> um, but it's a really good book if anyone sort of mm. wants to delve into all, how all that works in terms of like debt leverage. But Watch like, the big like, short. As, yeah. The big short's the, a good one. Short's the same, the same well. thing, yeah. Yeah, and you'll save time as well. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think Clooney's in it. Clooney, so, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's good eye candy. But um, it feels like, uh, you know, as, as a club, you would think even outside of our bias, mm. Everton have got to be a fairly attractive proposition at this point with the new stadium yeah. Yeah. You know, almost done. Mm. We've got the club safe in the Premier League for another mm. season. Mm. What what is the you know in terms of like product that we've t- yeah, you've talked on this channel so much this fan base is just waiting to explode yeah. they want to spend mm-hmm. money they want to buy stuff they want to yeah. support mm-hmm. they want to you know so I don't know what else Everton could do to be a, an attractive proposition other than being in the Champions League regularly which is not going to happen until we can figure out everything else mm-hmm. so um, it probably is the, you, you're going to be looking at the lower end of suitors who are going to be interested in Everton Football Club, but surely you would hope to attract the higher end of the lower end. Yeah. yeah. Right, and, and 777 <laughs> appear to be the pits. Don't yeah. They? But to your point, though, Sam, I mean, I'd, I'd have thought, again, I'm, I'm with you, whereby, you know, there's the cliche about sleeping giants and whatnot. And I know that, you know, we don't necessarily fit into that, but to an extent we do, in so much as, you know, there's so much potential with this club and so much potential. There's no reason why Everton Football Club couldn't go and replicate the kind of success that Manchester City had or someone like that when you think about that kind of investment in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they've got everything set up in terms of their history and their fan base and and and, and everything. Um, and in many ways, I'm surprised that they're not a clever buy for somebody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, where you look at it and you kind of go, no, absolutely, that's the club well, that we should buy. Well, I think like Villa and Newcastle have proved that. If you can get a club that's already got the fan, fan. I mean, at the end of the day, nowadays, no club that hasn't got a big fan base is ever really going to be able to pay you back with anything. That just mm-hmm. can't happen, can it? So you need a stadium that can make money. Well, we've got, we've got a brand new stadium. And that was also, that was, sorry to stop, but that yeah, was, in my understanding, that was always the thing that really held us yeah. back for years, yeah. is that when you saw all of this investment going into other clubs mm-hmm. with similar size and tradition and, and whatnot, is that we've been like, well, hang on, why is that going yeah. into Villa? Why is that going into this club? Why is that going into whatever? And it, we mm. always felt that we were hindered by the fact that, you know, there was no way we could develop Goodison. There was no mm. new stadium on the horizon and therefore was never a chance of growing it. And now that we've got this yeah. new stadium, surely all of those restrictions in that respect have been lifted exactly and and you're right because i mean if father michelle has done anything he did take the risk with the stadium he did basically start mm. building a stadium without having the finances and has just funded it bit by bit by bit um and i know a lot of people feel like that's a hindrance but it's it's done now it's 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 you know it's practically there it's being built in front of our eyes the thing that we've seen on on pictures um so that's there and as i said we've got the fan base like new like newcastle and villa you know they're they're going to expand because they can with their stadiums. We've got that stadium. We've got that fan base. We we're ready, like you've both just said. We've got the fan base to buy things, whether it's this country or internationally. We've got the man to go the games as well, which is massively important. People actually want to come and watch this product as bad as it's mm. been at times. Mm. And you do think that, having seen their example. Um, breaking into the top four, you know, in the last couple of seasons, Newcastle probably going to get Europe again this season. Is that? All you got to do is fund it, 
get the right people in and just be consistent in what you're delivering. And that isn't that hard, by the way. No. I mean, you look at the, no. you look at teams all across the all across Europe. The big teams consistently, like when I say big teams, I mean big teams is like the size of Everton, consistently deliver that. They just have the right people, and they don't they don't tamper with things, they don't mess about with things. They get the right people. They get adults run you know running the football club and and managing the team. It's not that difficult if you put a good plan in place. And I just think we're, we are, and you're right, Sam, we are biased. But at the same time, people on the outside can see this as well. People for, will say, how did Mishiri get so spectacularly wrong? How do you spend all that money and end up in the debt you're in uh, with, with little to show for it on the football pitch? Of course, we've got the stadium. So if someone could sort of look through our eyes at this football club, it, it it's it's all there. It's getting the attention, like you said there. It's like Tim Kale knocking on doors in in, in Qatar, um, you know, or or getting an, getting an American investor to just look our way. And maybe sometimes you need to do you need to do something out of the ordinary on the pitch. But Newcastle weren't going anywhere, and and suddenly they got a huge investment. You know, Villas people who own Villa are. M- really really rich they don't brag, uh, mm. brag about as much but they are massively wealthy and we need to get away from these these you know these investment companies who are just trying to grab up all different kinds of businesses that seem like they're faltering and actually have someone who goes you know what that would be a great business to take us forward so i don't know who's doing who's trying to sell us to these people or how they're trying to sell us um but it it needs to be better because there is there's so much potential with this football club. It's incredible, you know. Because we we said a lot this week is that the fan base we have now we don't even sell to. You know, you go on in the club shop, mm-hmm. you go online, you you go the games itself, and of course that'll change. But we we're not even catering to our own fans. Our own fans have to go to, um, you know, third party places to buy merchandise and this kind of things because the club isn't even making the money out of them as it is at the moment so so much can be earned we're definitely not i think we were the second second to lowest club for match day revenue in terms of like what how much each person pl- pays when they go the match it's like mm. it's like like, like 11 pound or something it's like mm. that's like three cans of chang didn't it yeah yeah, yeah. that's like not but mm. they, they're mm. other things aren't they? it's like if you go in a match the ale is, sh- is shite let's mm. be honest i mean i don't drink but but I know it's shite. Give Do you people... remember when you used to have to queue up at half time? You had two old deers in the stand, literally pouring cans out I know. for you. But it's like, that... it was, it, honestly, it was a joke. I know, like, there have been changes in the Gladys Street. They have, like, uh, automated machines now where yeah. you can go and get them yourself. But if you're not giving the ale before the game that people want, then they're going to stay in the pub up till, like, mm. five to three or whatever. If you're not giving them food, and it's all these things that were so bad at because we're stuck in the 90s. If someone just got a hold of us and changed all that, this, this could be... Because I've said loads of times, and I'm like bored of saying it, I'd rather spend my money with Everton than spend it with anybody else. So yeah. give me things to buy, you know, before the match. Give me somewhere to eat. After the match, let, make me, let me stay for an hour after the match so I can have a coffee and wait for the traffic to go down, whatever. There's so much stuff out there that if someone come in who understood these things could could instantly start making money out of this club. That's the thing, though, isn't it? It's that it's it's practices that are quite simple as well. Yeah. It's like it's almost like we are we are still. You know, I left there and when was it? 2006. I'd worked there for 11 years, and it, the club. It was marginally mm. different when I left and when I started. Yeah. The eleven years in football's huge, <laughs> and yet I still speak to people now. And although the, the although the numbers have tri- trebled in terms of staff and stuff, mm. the practices are still very same, similar yeah. to what they were when I left. Which yeah. is, well, you, you know, it's a lifetime. When we move stadiums, the, the the idea in my head is that everything's going to be different, and there will be these fan parks, yeah. there will be all these these facilities to make mm-hmm. more money and give fans more opportunity to spend money and spend the money with the club they love and support mm-hmm. the club they love. But it might just be that we take all the practices that are currently in place in Goodison and just mm-hmm. plonk them into a brand new stadium, yeah. and you've still got the two old deers pouring <laughs> the cans. And you've, I mean, mm-hmm. that won't happen. But in terms of like all the other stuff, who knows? I mean, yeah. time will tell. But you'd, you'd hope to because it's a huge opportunity, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, no, marginal decision, gains. The decision making that's happened over the last few years on so many different fronts, you know, on and off the pitch and every sort of aspect of the business of the football club has been so badly run mm. that actually everything that you say, Sam, isn't beyond the realms of possibility. You know, much as, yeah, it is tongue in cheek and, and it is, you know, 
But ultimately, what you're saying is absolutely right, because they've just proven consistently time and time again to get it horribly wrong. But this is where I think, you know, if you really want a glass half full scenario, you know, you want to look at it that and say, right, okay, let's look at it. Mm. The, the, The big kind of uplifts you can get is for the first time, you know, the first time in probably certainly 20 years, it's probably longer because it didn't change that. Peter Johnson tried, but it didn't yeah, quite yeah. work. But for the first time in 25 years, then let's say there will be fresh eyes on the football club. Yeah. Um, you would like to think whoever takes it over has got more business acumen than Farad Mashiri in terms mm. of wanting the thing to be successful. Not, I'm not saying he didn't because he did. He, he, he come in, he just thought he could throw money and it, mm. it, it'd be Man City without actually going, no, I've got to get hands on this and steer this in the right direction. Mm. And if someone does that through marginal gains, by actually changing a lot of the things we're talking about, injecting a new fresh impetus into the business, not just on the pitch, I mean, people who are working there, there'll be change, of course there will. But there might be some good people at Everton. Well, there are good people at Everton who mm. want to do better, want to do things in a different way and haven't been able to because the culture was set so heavily in a different way. This is a real opportunity. Again, opportunities can go two ways, can't they? Let's hope it, it falls on the right side this time. But if someone does get it, then it wouldn't take much at least to steer the club in the right direction, which therefore would make more money, which therefore would put the club in a healthier position, create more money for the recruitment team, which should then be able to... Well, then you could you could actually test them properly, couldn't you? Yeah. So you've got the funds. Why do you keep back? You're not good enough. We'll replace you. But I think Doing what concerns, that, you know, what concerns me, though, with all of that is the mm-hmm. fact that if we do end up going down one of these private equity consortiums for want of a better phrase whether it's 777 or whether it's somebody else mm. it's the fact that you know again you you you've potentially got a group of people who've actually got no real heart or mm. ownership ironically you know given the word mm. no real ownership in the club they you know this is part of their many many portfolios and yeah. stuff and they have some money in this and some money in that and they speculate and whatever and hopefully over that two, three period of time, their investment has done well, right? Mm. But it's very, very different to, you know, if you go back to the most traditional form of it, like you mentioned before, Sam, the kind of the Jack Walker, the the local millionaire, you know, that's the purest form of this, I suppose, if you like. That's kind of one person locally who loves the club and has one vision and wants to do whatever, you know, he or she can to make that better. But I mean, even when you look at, you know, things like without knowing the full structure of like the Saudi takeover of Newcastle, but it still feels like you have one group of people who they've bought this club for a huge amount of money and they have their very real ideas about what that should be in terms Mm. of the management and the coaching staff and the playing staff and, and all these different things. And they got rid of the old board and they've come in with their new ideas and you know, we would need to have that kind of thing. I'm not saying that, you know, it needs just wherever that money comes from, whether Mm, it's from the Middle East or whether it's from the Far East or whether it's from America, but at least have a group of people who Mm. are genuinely interested in that football club. Yeah. As opposed to it just being money, which is made up of, I've I've no idea, but it could Mm. be 20, 30, 50 different investors who were all part of this fund Mm. and therefore have no no actual association with the club whatsoever and therefore the decision making at every level you're going to go well hang on who ultimately is in charge of this who ultimately is steering this forward who's got the passion Mm. and the drive to do this um and that's what concerns me you know and again i i i this is a layman's view on this whole Mm. sort of takeover thing but just from the outside looking in that in essence is what concerns me about the kind of suitors that we are being caught mm. by at the moment. I think it, maybe it's, we need to give them the some. full Everton experience. Then whoever takes over, yeah. just like give them like in a microcosm. Like yeah. first of all, take them to the match, take them to Wil- the Wilms though early yeah. on. Yeah, get them a few pints of ale. Yeah. You know, get it, get in early, get get them queuing up for the Chang. 
Mm. You know, the Kanza Chang. We need to do an Operation Goodison experience yeah. as well. You know, yeah, that exactly. girl comes on the tannoy, mm. just it's way yeah. too loud. We need to do that as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sit, sitting behind a big pillar in the lower bullets, yeah. mm. you know, and go, there you go. You're an Everton fan now. Just give mm. him a check, you know, like, I don't know. Mm. It, it, it's, it's like that investment, because surely even as a rich businessman, and even if it is part of a portfolio, the idea that football is unlike many businesses, which, you know, you can track businesses on the stock exchange, but you've got a very real product on the pitch. You've got a league table. You can see exactly how well your investment is performing. Mm. Surely from a kind of hubristic point of view, that will give some impetus for that. But that, I totally agree with you, Dave. They're the, mm. they're the people that we need to stay away from, these portfolio people who are just hoovering up you know, properties. And, and, as soon as and it doesn't IPs. work, they'll be off to the next one. Mm. And then we'll yeah. be in even more shit, you know, because they will bloody leverage more debt or, or whatever against mm. the stadium and... It's what concerns me. Because it doesn't work, does it, at the end of the day? They they just don't work. They just... You need someone who's obviously got the money. I mean, I'm, you think of the ones at the top at the moment, at the top of the Premier League. You don't really hit... Apart from the Glaziers, who obviously are there to leverage debt on United and make money off it. You know, you think about Kronk here, like Arsenal. You never hear about him now. I know there was a load mm. of noise when he came in because he wasn't doing what the fans want him to do. But now you never hear of him. You just hear of the manager and you hear of like Edu at Arsenal. He just lets them because it runs mm-hmm. like clockwork. Yeah. At Tottenham, it just runs like clockwork. Um, you know, Chelsea used to, and we now know, like now, someone who doesn't quite, who hasn't quite understood it. You hear his name a lot. But even like Liverpool, when things are going well at Liverpool, you never hear about John Henry. It's, 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 it was Klopp and it was Michael Edwards and, and 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 you never hear that. You never hear of the owners because of a lot of these clubs. Villa, I, I said, mean, Villa. Liverpool fans. Have no, I know, but we hear, we're right here. FSG, but but we're time. right here. That's why we hear and about Arsenal it. hated Kronke. But they did. But but that's because he didn't get his feet in and start. But they mm. don't hear him now. And when they're doing well, that's what I'm saying. They mm. just you don't really hear about that. Whereas it's the stress clubs, that's when you start hearing about all who owns them. You know, oh, like, course, like the yeah. Villa fella, you wouldn't know the Villa fella if you mm. walked past them in the street, mm. and yet he's massively, massively wealthy. You know, and we need someone who just can come in and just say to the club, "This is what it needs to do. Uh, these are the people who are going to do it," and mm. you just and you just leave well, it alone because football clubs don't make money. No, no. Mm. So hopefully, hopefully we're getting there, um, and a resolution is round the corner. Um, it is about getting some new things as well, isn't it? Mm. You know, in football, even in life. Oh yeah, you know, like getting new clothes, new tan. <laughs> get the tan, the tan, the tan. I was wondering well, where you were going this. No, no. Well, I'm going yeah. with because I'm looking across mm. the studio and yeah. I'm seeing new attire for uh, me. Oh yeah, I'm still uh, seeing legs. Yeah, bare legs, which yeah. I'm, I don't know how I feel because mm. the temperature level isn't, in my opinion, yeah, short level in yeah. the studio just wow. yet. I love to stop you, Barry, because I've come in my shorts today. That's you're okay. at home. You're at home. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. I mean, they're, they're uh, John Cena snug. as well. They're snug. I like John it. John Cena. <laughs> but, but Ned mm. has rocked the shorts all week. Yeah, yeah. He's come mm. in in new attire today. He has, yeah. He hit us with a line before we started recording that. It's mm. the first time he's bought his own clothes. Mm. Which is... Uh, uh, as really astounded me mm. in all fairness it sounds like he's just come off the tit mm. fair play listen hey fair I mean play. that could be the title of his first novel couldn't it off it could be <laughs> it could be the it early be. days <laughs> but he does come out with lines I normally just borrow them or I get them from other people I mean he is he does he's with gold. shoes he does with shoes I don't I, clothes I don't know. I mean, has he ever admitted that to us before? Well, he has tried to rob no, he quite sucks, a lot of our yeah, stuff. Sucks, I mean, I see the Columbus shirt isn't back no, there, no. no, which we asked him to bring yeah. back in. Mm. Um, so is the stuff he's wearing, is it just fresh from the box? It is. Has it got the, has it got the dickhead lines down the sides? You know, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's creased. Yeah, yeah. It's creased. Yeah. Um, it's all training gear from Everton, from yeah. Finch Farm. That they sold to someone else and Ned's bought them off him. And we could have cut out the middleman. We know the bleeding mm. fella. We well, talked about third party before. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Is Ned very much like a triple seven in this case? Mm. Is he just going around and taking stuff that, you know, is just, otherwise. The stress. Yeah. Yeah. The stress. Yeah. yeah, triple dickhead. He's what, put. Like this. What are you rubbing? <laughs> He's rubbing. You're trying to rub a crease out of your shorts. No, no, no. I hope oh. that's what he's doing. Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, 
There's no I logo. Work. I'm not being funny if it's that far to the right. Fair play to him. There's, there's no, well, I mean. Have you ever bought clothes from these second-hand well, websites on the My on the missus. Internet? My no. missus has become addicted to vintage. Okay. Yeah, right. mine too. Yeah. Right. Mine too. So she, Our because... house smells of vintage. No, okay. she's selling the gear though. It's yeah, not yeah. Anyone, my it? Right, yeah. so I'll, I'll my... give I'll give you the I'll give you the deets. Um, so she's got loads of clothes. Yeah. That and now it's become like a game. Mm. So it's it's like you put the clo- and it's like it's like when you win money on the national when you've gone each way mm. and your horse has come in sixth. Yeah. But you put a tenner on the full whack, but yeah, you've won seventy five pence yeah, back. But you feel and, good. And you're running around the house. So it's like she puts stuff on Vinted. <laughs> mm. My daughter. She gets like one pound fifty for stuff, and she's like, "Yes, sold it. Yes." And it's like, "Hang on, steady on. You've got one pound fifty. It's like, yeah, but I could have got nothing for that. Hmm? That's she's right. Go. I could have better off in air pocket. My, my daughter does this as well, and then hmm? I get given these packages. Yeah, yeah. Got to well, where where the local drop off place well, is? Well, you've got to put it into one of them machines yeah. outside the garage. Well, literally, we've got one of those machines in the next street to us, oh, like a hundred yards away. There you go. So literally, it's like the whole game of putting it on. Winning, getting you one pound fifty, the nine charity like shops. Three points are like a basketball. Yeah, yeah. going round, doing the scan, which 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 door will open? Small, medium, or large? Oh, that one's open. Get over there, put it in. Oof, job done. It's like a game for full uh, to st- start to stop. Yeah, but and it's just. Well, my wife buys and sells on vintage, mm. but I have also said to her, "Do you realise there's more money to be made from selling clothes that have been." previously enjoyed if you know what i'm saying mm. oh like the japanese there's, stuff with there's, underwear yeah, and stuff. there's right, a buyer's okay. market for that and i'm i'm not suggesting that's something i would like my family yeah. or my wife to be associated with but mm. if there's if there's money to be made yeah mm, absolutely i'm open well i for, for sorry let me just stop here for one minute i thought you were going to say you mm. what you meant by that was as worn by sam avery uh oh, no. and when but, you say the, when you say the phrase i'm open as well that that mm. concerns me as well yeah it doesn't really work with yeah. get extra for that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> But just off the back of that, my, my <laughs> missus has gone as far as saying that she might start selling pictures of her feet online. Why not? Because, yeah, you know, there's, a, I, there's a big market yeah. for it, you know. I already well, sell both. pictures of other people's feet online. <laughs> so, so there you go. And like both, both of them or just one? Uh, depends how much. <laughs> You're supposed to put underwear on in these. On feet? No. And then have the foot. So there's the underwear in the background, then yeah. the foot. She might, make, she might do well on that. Why not? Pair of my pair bills of in the background. I don't know. Don't even show your face, do you? You don't need to oh, show no, your face or not. Pair of my no bills. You. You know? Why would they want a pair of your bills? You just said underwear in the background. Yeah, I mean, like her wearing. I'm just going to say a pair of people Homer do. Simpson well, fly mark bills. Your bills? Maybe there's a market for that wearing your bills selling it. What about Ned selling a picture of a six toes? Again, you, you'll know that they're his because then you'll just see George written across the back yeah, of them. Yeah, exactly. You'll know instantly that, that his mum's bought them from I was going to say, what, a, what about a picture of Ned's mum buying his bills in George? Put that online, see how much Thank money God that makes. There's more to that comment. Just... Yeah, yeah Ned, absolutely. Ned, just to bring you in quickly, yeah. would you ever pay? No, I don't want to come in. Would you ever buy off Vincent? I have. You have? Well, okay. I buy like, I buy like new stuff with tags on that's fell off the back of a lorry, if you know what I mean. <laughs> So like obviously there's you know when do, you get you know when you sell have, them on Vincent. You know when you, you know tags, where, you, you know some people. Do you know some the ink people. one goes off in yeah. his face? Do you know like, some comes in every you know blue half of his face. You get anything you want. Yeah. People well, come up to you and tell you they can get you anything no, you like, want. There's people that have started like I've got a mate who can get. Do me they have puppies? Any te- piece of technology I want on the cheap. They got a van. I probably somebody steals it. Okay, Ned. Um, there's, okay. There's probably there's people like mm. I call them project managers, um, <laughs> who are like in between. I like to call them. Ned. 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 Do you know that this is a public <laughs> forum? Don't yeah. You? This, yeah. They're you selling. Know, you know that this is going out. This is the out. To, yeah. They're selling those game on Vinted. You, you're, you're talking about your friends who may or yeah. may not be able to get you illegal electrical. Yeah. Goods. There might be a knock on yeah. their doors. Yeah. Mm. It's all to right. be fair, there was a knock on Ned's door from someone who took his electric gear off himself. To be fair. You know what I'm saying? To be fair. Ned, yeah, the king the police, of the scam. Please had nothing, so don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, I just get like new stuff off it. <laughs> Ned, and I you also what? sell stuff off And what you can also do, you can go to like. Um, okay, here we go. Like a charity shop or like a, uh, what do they call them, car boot sales, mm. and get mm. stuff on the cheap and yeah. then sell them on Vincent yeah. for more. You, well, you Ned. can. I mean, that's basically called you, replens. Business, isn't it? It's a yeah. replens business. Yeah. Yeah. You are a one-man, half-eight 
show on BBC One on a Monday night, mm. honestly. Mm. No, when they've got, they just need to fill that hour, uh, half an hour before whatever drama's yeah. on at nine o'clock yeah. with mm. some like scam busters mm. with Ned. With Ned, yeah. honestly. Yeah, but he would be the one they were trying to bust. Yeah, he'd be the one with the black line across his face. Yeah. In his shoe, when you when you go to charity shops or even vintage, I, yeah. I draw the line at shoes because yeah. I always just yeah. think someone's died in them. <laughs> like some these sandals or Crocs or whatever it is, like someone yeah. has expired while would wearing you, them. So, like, would you take other people's <laughs> shoes, Sam? Take them and, and yeah. wear, you know, yeah. for like a, a yeah. mate. Off a buzz. I don't think we're the same yeah. size, are we? No, nah, well, I don't. What I'm size are you, by the way, Sam? Size eleven. Oh, you, I, but you we see, are definitely not a, a, the same. <laughs> I'm a tw- bigger feet than I thought you'd have. Mm. I'm a size twelve. I'll take that as a compliment. Just wanted to put yeah. that out there. See, I'm only I'm only an eight and a half. Well, I wear nines. <clears throat> I'm an eight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also go. the same as Dave. Oh, Dave, you're sure, the same you size. Are. So never have <laughs> shoes on around Ned. Yeah, otherwise, he will take he them. will take them off. No, yeah. uh, if you have got yeah, any I'm old not. ones though, Dave. Ned a- absolutely it. loves wearing other people's shoes. Did you hear what you said? What? If you have got any old shoes yeah. that you don't want, Dave, I'll yeah. have them. Yeah. Let me have it. Let me have a look through my back catalogue, Ned. <laughs> and Dave. What I've got. And do you know what? And just just so that you you know, I go, I put them in the dishwasher first as well. I I wore these <laughs> at uh, Radio One's big weekend in yeah, Dundee. Yeah, yeah. They have a lot of sentimental value. Ned <laughs> would have them as worn by Dave. I'd have the ice skates uh, and wear them uh, to work. <laughs> Biffy, <laughs> he'll have your ice skates and dancing uh, on ice. Uh, I <laughs> once wore these, uh, introducing Biffy Clyro to the stage. Biffy Clyro, isn't? It? I don't know. Some, some Dave's. But the, uh, Ned yeah. would. The reason I'm masking yeah. is Ned has. I wouldn't say regularly he's probably overplaying mm. it, but there has been occasions when Ned has come into. I bought them twenty quid on the sale. No, I know, I know. <laughs> just, just bear with. Just bear with. Did you there have been occasions when Ned has come into the studio. With shoes that were two sizes too big for him because he was giving them. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's factual. Facts. That's factual. factual. That is factual. Like a clown. Honestly, <laughs> mate. Honestly, right? These are my dad's shoes, and I'm having it. His dad is still very much here, but he's just took them. He's <laughs> also what he would have wanted. Yeah, yeah. He's also he's also had cam shoes. Yeah, he's had cam. He's had all sorts. He's he was going to throw them out because they would like they're dirty. Yeah, and I went, don't throw them out. I'll have him. Went, if you can clean them, you can have him. And yeah. Cleaned him and then that's not I wouldn't a... trust if I if I had a kid's party with a bouncy castle, I wouldn't trust Ned to come near that bouncy castle because he'd just be taxing all them shoes. The them shoes would be gone. Fact, Dave, he'd have one of your big I'm, I'm having, I'm having that castle for Aldi. He'd be, he'd be like bleeding it's, Cinderella. No, his perfect job is working in a bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> Just take it. You know the way you hear them things where people have like, access to people's banks, but they yeah. don't like take a hundred quid or yeah. they just take like Little a pound bit, yeah. or like fifty. Yeah, 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 Ned yeah. would do that in the yeah. bowl. Not just be just one pair of shoes. Just the left, the left, <laughs> and then the right to just get the right to just get put in a box, and then he and then goes there would, shuffling. Then there would be no, then there would be no pattern to the crime either. Exactly. People are gonna go. Do you know what? He's not a left shoe thief. He's not a right shoe no. thief. He's not a bow shoe. He just he just does a bit of everything. We have no it. idea who it is. And then he and sells them to his mate. Story in the new Bergerac will be. This will be yeah. the first crime he's got to oh, crack. Yeah. Or in his yeah. also. Instead, oh. of it being, instead of it being set in Jersey, it'll be set in St Helens. Yeah, yeah. Or it'll be in his book just after tit. Mm. Just off the tit. Ned's yeah. Ned's brand new book. Nah, Ned's brand new book. I, as we just before we started recording, the. You yeah. know, Dave and Sam were talking about like bank holidays throwing mm. you off. Oh yeah, and it was a weird one that week last weekend. One with Everton playing Friday night, oh, and yeah. then obviously beautiful. the bank holiday on the Monday. It's beautiful. Mm. You know, it, people do things differently at bank oh, holidays, yeah. don't yeah. they? It, it's, and especially with the games, it mm. stretches mm. the week. So yeah. how was your bank holiday weekend? I was wondering where you were going with that. I I you had some amazing to... story. No, then. it wasn't. I just want to know what you did. It was, it was, it was good. Well, you made up that the game was out the way. I was. Friday night. I was in here and on Saturday. Just, done know, the business, that, yeah. you know. <laughs> get that sorted. And that was it. That was it. Done. Went for a Has good... it thrown you for the week? Don't no. you keep thinking it's Wednesday? But it... no, no. Grown up, you just grown don't up, give man. life that much thought, do I, you? I don't. I don't. Talked to me a bit like I had two Saturdays and two Sundays. That's nice. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So are you are you aware that it's Thursday today, Dave, or are you thinking? Me? Oh, no, to- totally aware, totally aware. Oh, well, fair yeah, play. Yeah. You think no, I'm good f- on my days of the week. Are you? Oh. That's good. It's good to know. It is good to know that you, How are you understand. How the alphabet, Dave? Really good. <laughs> really Honestly, good. really, really good. Fluent. You know, I'm not very good at doing it backwards. 
but forwards. Is it, you good? Smash Mustard. It. Yeah, yeah, smash it. What are you like, Sam? Are you, are you, you know, you had things to do, didn't you? Stuff to get done. I thought you meant with the alphabet. With the alphabet, I have you, to start from the beginning and I have to I, sing the song to know what comes next. I mean, I it, start it, starting from the beginning I, <laughs> is probably the right place I to start, I have to say that. Sam. But if you say what comes after M, I've got to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yeah. My missus has got this thing where she knows the ninth. The oh, that's like, weird. Yeah, I like mean, the ninth, nice the, the 15th yeah. and the 21st, like, or something yeah. like that. And so, you know, if you, you do, you're do, you on, like, I don't know if there's a, a game show or a quiz or something, mm. and they go, mm. watch the whatever? She has the answer within, like, one second. Well, I know that ninth, the, eh, whatever she it should, is. She should do something like the 1% Club. That sounds like her kind of thing. Well, one of our one of our Premier members yeah. was actually on the One Percent Club this week. Well, Reds. a couple of weeks ago, well, I caught it this mm-hmm. week, and he done very well. He got in the Champions League places, finished mm-hmm. fourth, done well. Yeah, but that's mm-hmm. like going back to what your point about the letters. Mm-hmm. We can regurgitate Everton games from like seventeen no, years I ago. I know, but it's just that. So, it's just a weird. F- I just find that we, well, that's the ninth letter of the alphabet. There's only twenty six of them. So go on. Have to be a genius. What's the twentieth letter of the alphabet. Twentieth letter. Mm-hmm. Don't try and work it out. Tell me. It isn't, though. Or is it, then? Oh, no, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just randomly chose something towards the back end there, didn't you? No, because that's, <laughs> that would have the 18th or the 19th left. So you got it wrong. Maybe. I'm just saying. No, no, you're right. Me- remember? Yeah, it, like, look at them. I've got them can't look them for letters. It is T, isn't it? It is T. Of course it's T, you pair of tits. T for tits. <laughs> Off the tit. <laughs> Off the tit, Ned's book. Uh, are, you, are you good at counting, Ned? Um. Yeah. What? <laughs> Why are you looking at his face? I mean, I was thinking this actually the other day. Like, <laughs> oh my god, what, what were you were thinking, thinking the other day? What were you really thinking? I was thinking yeah, we didn't. Did you remember to breathe first? What were you thinking? Yeah, yeah. I was. Because there was a time you said you forgot to breathe. Remember on the podcast. So I, I just want thinking, that clear. We didn't really do a lot of counting in school, did we? We just did like fine decks and stuff. And then if you went back, that's now, not counting. Nobody would have a clue how to do that. And even the equations I did at a, uh, in 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 my degree, I was yeah. looking at someone working out, and yeah. I was like, this makes no sense. I can't even remember it. But that's we didn't, never did any counting. And but when I played, what counts and then when just... I played darts, I'm like, well, I wish we did more counting in school. When you play darts, <laughs> so do you think? Just, yeah. Sorry, just before we finish, do you think as part of your degree, that each week it would have been helpful if your tutor would have made you all count? No, just a little bit of counting in like in school, maybe like GCSE. Mm. Not necessarily my degree. I don't even know why we're doing scientific physics equations in my degree. It was, it was. What's you your know. degree in again? Uh, it was like oh, the physics of all. It was audio engineering, so we had to learn well, the physics of physics. audio. Hang on, so you don't. So your degree is in audio engineering. Has, yeah. there, has there ever been a case recently where you've <laughs> an interview's been recorded with no sound? Um, yeah, but I didn't have to do. do no, I'm equations. just asking it. As is that say like the last seven days? Has the has there been an interview in the studio? I've that... done one where it didn't export the audio no no i'm asking you has, has there been a, a case because you are your degree it sounds in... like a disciplinary right yeah. now no, no, i'm just it? asking hey charmy i'm this. just asking has there been a case in the like you know with you being an audio i think we should expert. leave that bombshell and find out mm. on next week's episode let's, yes let's leave it do some counting between now and next week Ned. i know you can do counting your own time mm. you know you don't need school we'll never freaking learn it then so i'll get i'll get the 10 i go what the hell do we do now <laughs> seen someone so angry about counting uh, get to 10 and we'll just turn back hell no. right. fair enough just leave um, it. i think leave it there sounds yeah, like everton sounds like everton's wingers right we will uh we will leave that right here um we'll let ned count the days to the next podcast if he can't yeah get to that if uh, he was taught that in he should be able to ned should only be about no, no, no i'm quite good at the street ned I'm quite, like good at, I'm quite good at quick math. Hey, yeah, Sam just asked you, do you think people will just start seeing you now and then go, count? No, count. but what I will say is there's a lot of maths questions. One, uh, one, uh, 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 The quiz I go to, and I'm always like the quick maths guy. You're like, the quick you maths guy. Quick the maths. quick maths guy. So you've you just said you, you, you're not very good at counting, but you're the quick maths no, guy. Never, and I, when you I, play darts, you go, I wish we'd have done more. No, what counting. I'm saying is we never, ever did it in school. It was always like rubbish. Well, maybe you're just a maths, maths genius that's got no, that I'm counting okay, ability. On maths. next week's 1878 podcast, you'll hear Ned recite The Colours of the Rainbow. And on that note, thank you very much for listening. Cheers, boys. Make sure you like, subscribe, give it a five-star review, all of that stuff. We will see you later. Bye.